subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to press the bell icon to get all the latest updates. Hi everyone, my name is Anita and I'm so happy to welcome Professor Acher Lau, who is a Professor of Marketing and Program Director at Mahindra University School of Management. Professor, welcome to Inc. Hub Media. Thank you, Anita. My pleasure. So I was going through your profile and your work is pretty interesting. You have done your PhD from um, Fox School of Management, Fox School of Business, Temple University. And you have worked in the space of digital transformation and you have been a consultant and trainer. Um, you have taught at various business schools like uh, the Indian School of Business, XLRI, SP Gen Global, uh, Great Lakes Institute of Management. and your work is really, really inspirational and aspirational as well. You have more than 3000 citations and I'm so happy to interact with you today. Um, tell me about your journey, um, how you started and what made you to take a plunge from an entrepreneur um, to becoming a research scholar at uh, the university uh, in America. Well, like many decisions in life, you know, sometimes uh, uh, random things just happen. I would say my entry into a PhD program was uh, more random than planned. Of course, you know, this uh, PhD thing runs in my family because practically everybody from my grandfather to my uncles on my mom's side, dad's side are PhDs and professors or scientists. So uh, that is probably, you know, an idea that was in my head for a pretty long time. And uh, I was lucky that, you know, got an admission into a couple of schools in US. Finally, I decided that I'll go to Fox School of Business at uh, Temple. And that's how I started my journey. And uh, the PhD journey was fabulous. And I really cannot uh, think of a single bad experience that I had during the PhD. Uh, faculty are uh, very supportive. The research environment is very robust in uh, good schools, obviously. Mm -hmm. And because of that, uh, I, I believe PhD pro good PhD programs give a chance for uh, their students to thrive learn i mean who would pay you money to do research and learn right that's a very rare condition if you think about it and that's exactly my experience in my phd program mm -hmm. for that four years i was lucky to interact with a lot of good professors who were not only uh, uh, research active from an academic perspective but also fabulous teachers and uh, incredibly good uh, consultants and uh, all of those things rubbed off on me so i would say that four years as a phd student was for probably one of the most rewarding experiences of my life okay so how your research uh, topic evolved like why digital transformation when did you uh, complete your phd uh, tell me more about that part Again, uh, research topic uh, was a random chance. Uh -huh. I was thinking of something else and then started reading and you read a lot during your PhD. And this was uh, in 2004 when slowly digital was becoming a, a common theme amongst the conversations both in industry as well as academia. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, what is digital? Right? Because before that, I would even hate to use an email. There were conditions where uh, the company with which I worked would use uh, a Lotus email to send me a message and I would fax them back. Mm -hmm. That was the kind of person I was, you know, very non-digital, very, very physical. And, uh, you know, this digital thing was taking over. A lot of people were talking about it. And I said, OK, let me explore this topic. And as I was exploring multiple options in terms of topics within this area, reading a lot and all that stuff, one of the topics that caught my attention was uh, word of mouth. Mm -hmm. which is a topic which has been discussed for a very long time in marketing but uh, has now become a big deal because of social media a big deal when it comes to digital uh, arena digital marketing if you will right mm -hmm. and uh, the good thing that i thought about the topic from a phd perspective was that it is not only contemporary because of uh, digital and social media and you know all these modern behaviors but it also has a robust uh, of almost I would say 50 years of research to back it up in terms of theories in terms of you know behaviors and all that all that stuff right and that probably was the reason why I chose online word of mouth as one of the key topics that I would like to explore during my PhD mm -hmm. and that's how the whole journey started and obviously you know you cannot you cannot uh, pigeonhole yourself 
the moment you get into an area like digital so many other things come in and then one thing led to another i was as again because of my professors i was lucky to get into a couple of very interesting consulting projects and research projects and that, that expanded my vistas if that's a word to use and uh, slowly but surely i started exploring other aspects of digital including you know how digital is used in companies so yeah over a period of time i from a marketing perspective i explored a lot of digital marketing topics right but i realized that when i was talking to companies from a consulting perspective or from an advisory perspective uh, digital marketing doesn't stand on its own it doesn't make any sense it has to be part of a larger context which is the digital strategy of the company right and that's how i started merging these two topics and yeah then that's the word that we use today digital transformation okay so you have been working in this space for past to say uh, 15 20 years Yeah, first few years as a student, learning from the uh, good ones, good professors, and good industry people, and then yeah, on my own, I've been exploring this topic and doing a lot of things for the last yeah, I would say. Few years, okay. Years. So, what do you think? Like in a few uh, decades, coming uh, next decade, uh, what would be the potential two, three topics which you think that are coming up and picking uh, from your domain, and how would you like to transition from digital transformation to any other space? right so if you look at digital as a topic mm -hmm. forget digital transformation strategy you know those are all just uh, add ons digital let's call that you know digital as an umbrella term there are four or five things that are yet to be seriously explored mm -hmm. more so in india okay i would say the research in the indian context is still very nascent mm -hmm. right uh, for whatever reason if you look at for example some of the best schools in the country like the iims and other places uh, for whatever reason digital as a topic has not been explored from a research perspective as well as so many other topics okay and uh, of course you know even indian companies are slowly getting onto that bandwagon mm -hmm. right and it's a good bandwagon to get onto so if uh, if you if you break down digital as a topic there are four to five things that need to be seriously studied in the indian context okay right one is the notion of a digital strategy what does it really mean okay. what are the components of a digital strategy sure we have frameworks that have been developed by you know professors and consultants in the us and other western countries but we still don't have a direct application of those in the context of india number 1 and automatically when you talked digital strategy the second topic that comes to mind is data data driven decision making and analytics everybody talks about data is the new oil or data driven decision making and analytics is the future but we still don't have the context either from a research perspective or from a uh, you know a industry perspective as to what does it really mean what does it you know mean for companies how does it actually work what is the framework through which companies have to go through that's topic number 2 topic number 3 if you know people have to study is digital marketing and within that there are thousand themes online word of mouth again most of the theories that we talk about in online word of mouth social media are still theories that have been developed in the western context we still don't have a a theory let's say that has been home built based on the psychology and the behaviors of let's say indian consumers right so whatever we are doing whatever companies are doing right now are in fact just uh, experimentations number 3 and number 4 is the 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 notion of organizational change because you cannot talk of uh, transformation you cannot talk of digital unless there is a serious talk about how the senior executives have to be trained how do they have to change their mindset right and of course finally all of these coming together from mm -hmm. a corporate strategy perspective so i would say these are the five themes broad level which seriously need to be explored from a digital perspective more so in india there is a serious need for research and i think it's time all the good researchers in this country step up to the plate for that particular topic great i wanted to hear it from you because you have worked in this space for a very long time uh, now you are at uh, the mahindra university school of management what kind of uh, what kind of areas you are exploring and what kind of students you are looking for to work with you yeah so uh, let me start off by telling you about the faculty pool that we have mm -hmm. we have built a pretty diverse faculty pool uh people from different backgrounds you know people for, with phd's from indian institutions foreign institutions within india and you know talking about iims isb you know, those kinds of things 
uh, and then we also are trying to build a a pool of faculty that has a little bit of you know uh, adjacencies if let if we use that term right we don't want faculty to get pigeonholed all the time right we want them to explore other topics as well for example we don't mind a finance faculty talking about economics we don't mind a marketing faculty talking about digital or vice versa so from that perspective uh, the and uh, if you were to push me back into what kind of research that we are doing broadly sure we have finance faculty we have economics faculty uh, we do we are very active in academic research all of our faculty publish uh, in uh, really good journals including you know the abcd list and uh, some of us have even dallas 24 ft50 kind of journals okay and uh, at the same time we are also very active in the industry we regularly write case studies we work with a lot of companies and uh, we publish in uh, opinion pieces in some of the best uh, newspapers in the country because we want this to be friendly to the industry as well as policy making body right this is the top level story of the kind of research that we're doing okay. now in terms of uh, uh, research themes do you want me to be specific about marketing or in general in general and then marketing okay uh, so let me start off with uh, what kind of students we're looking for in the phd program uh, we have uh, developed our PhD program along the lines of uh, good PhD programs in the US and uh, Europe uh, from where you know we have all uh, been trained. So that's the model. Uh, that means you know the first two years will be uh, about taking classes so that you know everybody comes onto the same page and then you get trained in the topics, get accustomed to the theories and then simultaneously you're working as a TA and an RA, you're working with the professors and building your research team. And as you progress into the third year, obviously, you know, you start thinking about your proposal, your dissertation, and meanwhile, you're continuously working on different uh, themes of which one would you will pick for your PhD thesis, right? It is going to be rigorous, four to five years, lot of work, and uh, from an industry perspective, as well as from a research perspective, we want them to explore the topics. So what that means, is the kind of students we're looking for should be one curious that's very important in phd right we're not expecting people to come in with you know 10 different things that they already know because if they are already coming in with so much then what do we do right mm -hmm. our job is to train them mm -hmm. so we want them to come in with curiosity we want them to come in with you know some basic knowledge of things like mathematics statistics because those are very important right people with work experience obviously are always welcome because even if they have a little bit of work experience they have the perspective that will help them appreciate some of the things that we discussed during research seminars and things like that right so these are the kinds of students we're looking at mm -hmm. because we want our students to aim high when it comes to both journals as well as for them to get into some of the best schools as faculty Right. So that means, for example, if you look at uh, uh, a typical marketing PhD student today in the US, right, or Europe, you know, some of the best schools, they are walking out with just as they finish their PhD program, the average publications they have is at least one A journal, which many people don't even get in their entire lifetime. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of competition we're looking at, right? Mm -hmm. And today, if you look at, you know, some of the best universities in our country, and you know IIMs and even many private universities they are insisting on research and we want to prepare our PhD students for that kind of a role where they're able to get into IIMs or any of the good private universities mm -hmm. that's the idea okay. so are you involved in consulting projects as well so yeah. will your students uh, get a chance to work with you oh, absolutely. will you get a chance to work on your consulting project with you learn how to do consulting assignments as well absolutely. consulting executive education case studies okay right and then industry interface let's say okay. these are the four things that we have been doing mm -hmm. beyond the academics part of it so that our research and our work is much more relevant to the industry mm -hmm. right so let me repeat mm -hmm. that we do a lot of uh, seminars and workshops for the industry, mm -hmm. right? We do a lot of case studies. We work with some of the best companies and, you know, write case studies about them, which get published in these platforms like, you know, HPSP, IV, mm -hmm. right? And uh, we do consulting, obviously, and we do a lot of executive education, many of our faculty, including myself. Mm -hmm. So we want our PhD students to get involved in all of these mm -hmm. because that's how you learn. Absolutely. That's how you get ideas for research. Mm -hmm. You don't want to uh, create a research idea just, you know, sitting in the sofa and just thinking about random stuff. 
so yes we want to give them that experience and simple story as i said that's how for example me or our dean you know we all have progressed in our life we were lucky to have professors who involved us in all of these things and we will absolutely do that we believe that that's the way to uh, grow yourself in a phd program i can see that the entire program is designed uh, for the holistic development of a phd scholar be it the case writing be it teaching be it doing research and consulting and many more aspects and many more facets of uh, a research student and research life you the phd program i am i'm very hopeful from this phd program uh, one you. last question from you uh, uh, what is your piece of one piece of advice to potential phd students to potential phd students okay um one as i said a uh, lot of people get into phd programs with a lot of doubt right i guess like any other career move i would say that's probably the worst thing you can do because uh, you have to get in big time you know when i say get in big time with a lot of enthusiasm because if you are able to do that then the amount of learning that you will get from phd programs is incredible Mm -hmm. that's been my personal experience i have seen my friends do that and the difference between a successful phd and probably a, a mediocre phd is the amount of enthusiasm that you put in into it sure there will be problems there will be issues we have to deal with that like any other thing in life but i would say number 1 is enthusiasm number 2 is uh, start thinking about research right from day 1 for two reasons one is as you start thinking about research no matter how bad it is at this stage obviously you even evolve in research right what happens is as you start thinking more you start getting more ideas you start exploring more themes right and because of that your knowledge base automatically expands mm. and then you are at the front you are discussing with your boss you are discussing with your faculty and then you are also giving them ideas and that also gives them opportunities to get you involved in different projects and things like that that is how you start getting into different projects right so the, these are the the intangible parts of it the tangible parts of it period one is techniques right there should be at least 3 to 4 techniques whether they are math based or you know qualitative whatever you want to call it you have to own them My personal rule for a PhD student is: by the time you walk out of a PhD, you should be a master at at least two techniques. Mm. You can call your own, so that doesn't matter what kind of data comes across your desk. You are able to think about it from the angle that you know, and then you know you can always pick up new techniques later. Wow. Right. So as long as you're doing, and then finally, of course, uh, aim for at least two publications by the time you walk out. one good journal one mediocre journal right and what that means is if you are if you need two journals as you walk out in your fourth year or fifth year that means you are actually planning for it starting from your second year mm-hmm. that's how long it takes unfortunately to publish in good journals absolutely, absolutely. right so these are my four pieces of advice to uh-huh. phd students thank you so much professor and i'm so happy that we interacted and i wish you all the best Uh, you. with upcoming and incoming phd students at uh, the school of management mindra university sure my pleasure thank you anita thank you it's great to see you all here thank you for watching our work if you have not subscribed to impact hub media then please hit the bell icon and subscribe to our channel and support research celebrations in india